Hello and welcome to another video of me doing random tech stuff that makes me look interesting and intelligent. But really I just have a lot of time on my hands. Anyway, so what are we doing today? Well today I'm showing you a video of my old MacBook 13 inch, I think it's 13.3 inches. So my sister gave me this when I was in college back in 2007. That's right. This computer is 11 years old and it still boots as you can see. And I'll show you exactly how I got to be able to install Lion on this in a little bit and throughout this video, right? That's what this video is for. So why make this video? What's the benefit and you know, what else and how and who and what, right? All that good stuff. So an overview of my Mac book let's see so like i said i got it 11 years ago in 2007 back then it was one of the best laptops out there it did have the core 2 duo we'll go into the specs later on um a little bit of history with it you know i used it i was able to game on it a little bit actually i was able to run uh, the original halo on this computer uh, the mac version that is and i figured why not make this video now it's 11 years old and in a world where Apple keeps, well not just Apple, but basically every tech company comes out with something new and big and exciting and innovative every year, or so they say, at least for sure it's more powerful That's and more efficient, you know, Moore's Law. That's really true. But in a world where, you know, every year we see new things, I was kind of hoping that maybe we could go back in time a little bit and appreciate what we have um, with what we, and compare it to what we used to have. So, this laptop was given to me and then around 20 uh 11 2012 i kind of stopped using it um some stuff started failing you know it's getting old you know it's you couldn't really update it anymore the latest software you can run run on this is um is lion and as you can see here the battery's not working uh so in 2013 i think i got my other laptop which is a macbook pro and in 2013 i with new laptop in hand, I didn't need it anymore. Need I didn't need this one anymore. So what I did was, I grabbed it, I gave it to my dad, and he connected it and charged it for three years. That resulted in the battery dying in 2016. The battery's dead. It does not work. If you go into the about this Mac and the detailed description of everything, it says battery, check battery, maximum charge capacity zero milliamp hours. That's what it says. The MacBook told me, hey, this battery's dead. You need to replace it. But you know how Apple is. They're barely willing to replace stuff that's new. You know, a year or two years, you know, they're really, barely willing to fix it. So they definitely don't have it. So I have to get like a third party Chinese manufacturer to get me one, right? So what did I do here? So first, I had to get a new battery. I grabbed that. I bought the battery. I got a brand new. And it does work. We'll see in the video in a little bit. Then I figured the original hard drive is 80 gigs. It still works fine, but I figured might as well use an SSD, right? To do that, you need this iFixit kit because Apple doesn't want you to mess with their hardware and they have all weird uh, screws in there. Except this one. This one you can use with the with a spoon or a quarter or whatever. It even shows you like in the instruction manual, the original one. You can remove it with a quarter. This is me removing the old battery. It doesn't have a charge at all. It doesn't recognize it, it's just dead weight. It's a paperweight. Doesn't matter if it breaks, blah, blah. So we just knock that over. Nobody cares. And then we grab the new one and we install it. You see how it looks? It looks a little bit different than the Mac. This one looks just plastic. The battery in the Mac, the original one is aluminum, but this is mostly plastic, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. You insert it like that. You push it down a little bit and then you lock it in place with a quarter or with the back of a spoon you know it doesn't matter you know whatever all right so then what do you do you check the charge this battery actually has five dots representing 20 percent increments of charge whereas the old one had only four so this shows the battery and it's not connected and it turns on if i wanted to turn on the battery the, the computer i would have to have it connected uh, the power supply given is enough to have the computer running 
but it won't charge anything. You know, it's the battery's dead. But here, you know, it boots up fine. So we're all happy here. So we had to replace the battery. We had to replace, well, we didn't have to, but I wanted to replace the solid, the hard drive with the solid state drive. Now that solid state drives are so cheap, you know, I can get a 240 gig for like $35 or $30. You know, it's pretty cheap now. So I figured it went out, right? You can see that it boots up here. So how did we get to the boot up screen? How did we get my computer into here? Okay, so originally this computer came out with Leopard. Yes, that is a while ago. Then Snow Leopard came out. Then Lion came out. And then Mountain Lion came out. Okay, now, when you try to update this computer from Leopard to Snow Leopard, you can't do that. Apple says, okay, pay us $20 and we'll send you a DVD. Obviously, I don't wanna do that. I just want to replace my drive here, you know, and since the new drives are actually smaller, it's seven millimeters instead of nine, you have to put a little space around it, but that's fine. Just put the space around it, it has little kind of adhesive, you know, little things on it, you know, put the little lid on so you can pull it out if you need to later on with the little plastic, the white flap. No, it goes in, no problem, it's installed, whatever. Okay. The problem with that with that drive was that it was formatted for Windows and the Mac didn't even recognize it at all. So what I had to do was I had to install it in an external dock formatted in the Mac OS extended parentheses journaled. And then what you had to do was you to make it a master boot record. Then you could put it, insert, insert it into the computer and install um, leopard on it or snow leopard. I actually installed the snow leopard So how did I install the snow leopard? Well first let me show you this here. I To install lion You literally had to go back in time and just change it to like 2012. That's what I did You had to change the date and time to 2012 because the lion install this that you have if, if you still have it on your external or in a storage or a flash drive somewhere it will not boot there's something in the files that says, if after a certain date, I don't know the date, you will no longer be able to install this software anymore. Which makes sense because they stopped supporting Lion back in 2014. So you have to go back in time, right? All right. So let's go back with our, uh, with our solid state drive. So once we format it, I was able to physically install it in the computer with the spacer that you saw. And then I was able to install Snow Leopard. Luckily, I still had a Snow Leopard copy on my, on my cloud that I bought. So I installed Snow Leopard. After that, I wanted to update, and you update it, you know, it, it, it's, you can still update, which is weird. So if you install the, the first Snow Leopard, you can actually update to the latest Snow Leopard, but they won't let you install Snow Leopard from scratch. Now, to install Lion, like I said, you have to go back in time, and I still had that. And it took me a while to figure this out online, so... You know, that's that's the solution to your problem if you can't install it. It says it's been corrupted, blah, 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 but it hasn't been corrupted. It just it just won't work. You just need to physically change the time in your computer to go back in time and make sure that it's still a valid time frame for the computer to install. After that, you simply check the box off to set time and date automatically, update the, the computer, and there's no problem. No problem at all. You can actually install the updates again like Snow Leopard, even though you can't snow install Lion from scratch, but you can install all the updates for Lion. So to recap, install Snow Leopard from scratch, update Snow Leopard to the latest, and then turn that clock back in the computer, install Lion, and then update it normally. And that is after you install a new battery because it doesn't work anymore, and you install a new, solid, new storage device, in this case a solid state drive, and the solid state drive actually works perfectly. It works great. The only problem is that this computer is so old that it's SATA 1. That translates to 1.5 gigabits per second, which means that it actually uh, transfers or write speeds, I think, at uh, 192 megabytes per second. If you look at the storage device that I got for this computer, it's not the best one out there. But the write speed is like 480, and the and the read speed is like um, 
or the right speed is like 220 and the, and the read speed is 480, something like that. Look at the pictures. It's it's pretty freaking fast compared to Sata 1. And that's why I decided to update my computer. Because, well, you know, I just it was just a side project. I had nothing else to do. I wanted to see if it still worked, and it does. I was actually even able to um, to run um, YouTube on this. YouTube was able to run on this. It wasn't able to run on Snow Leopard. So if you have a, uh, a Safari from Snow Leopard, it won't run. If you have the latest update in Safari and Lion, you can actually watch YouTube videos. The problem is that my computer, the audio, for some reason, it's, it's not working. So it's either the audio, it's not the audio card, it isn't. But the speaker somehow got maybe disconnected from the computer and the speakers will not work. If I put in headphones, if I plug it in, plug in an audio jack, it works fine. I haven't tested it with Bluetooth. I'm pretty sure it'll work. You know, Macs are made to last. But after 11 years, that doesn't work. You know, I show CNN loading really quick, which was actually kind of a cheat thing because it actually took a while to load CNN. It took like 20 seconds to load CNN. And then if you go to MLB.com, you know, World Series season, you know, World Series time is here. You know, instead of watching the game, I'm doing this. It takes a good chunk of time to load MLB.com. Yeah, it's still loading. Yeah, it takes a while. But it loads. It, work, it seems to work fine. You just need to be patient with it. It works with my latest uh, Wi-Fi router, which is great. You know, I don't know what happened here with the whole certificate. I put yes, and then it took me somewhere else. I just got rid of it. Let's see here. So we'll go back to CNN. Yeah, it loads pretty fast. You can see down that the battery, you can see it's 66%, which is perfect. It works fine. And here, I am just going to show you to prove to you that it's actually Lion. It's brand new. It's brand new installation. You can see all the little dashboard and spaces and all this stuff. You know, or desktops, whatever they call them. Before they had spaces like uh, Linux, but now they have that. Um, so yeah, 10.7.5, which is the latest version of Lion. You can't get any more. Um, 2 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, 4 gigs of RAM, DDR2 RAM, that is. This computer originally came with 1 gig of RAM. Like 6 months after I bought it, I removed one module of 512 megabytes and I installed 2 gigs in there because that's the most it'll take. And then since I was starting college student for a while, it wasn't until I got out of college where it's too late by then. But I was able to get another four, another two gigs of DDR2 RAM really cheap, so I installed that, and it works perfectly. Four gigs of RAM. The resolution is so old, it's barely over 780, uh, 720p. The storage drive is pretty much empty because I just barely installed it. I have nothing else. I think I took one selfie on, on Photo Booth, and that's it. So, yeah, it works perfectly. You could even... I think you can run Boot Camp on this, too. There you go, four gigs of RAM, which is actually not bad. For a computer that was bought in 2007, 4 gigs, back then that's a lot. Now granted, I didn't have 4 gigs back then. You know, but now the bare minimum on the Windows PC is uh, 4 gigs. Um, if you want a game, it's 8 gigs and that's on really a budget machine. You want to get 16, you know. If you want to do anything productive and watch videos and do stuff, 16 gigs is like the recommended, right? But you can get, off, get, get by by 8 gigs just doing um, basic things. So now, if you go to utilities and you go to system um, information, you can see the detail of, of all the hardware specs here, which is this. But then you have to go into, uh, where is it? It's right here. Yeah, system report. You have to click on system report. And then you can see all the good information from the computer. Everything's in there. And that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully, I helped you guys um, install a Snow Leopard and Leopard in the machine. You know, SATA 1 does work with SATA 3 drives. A SATA 1 interface does work with SATA 3 drives. So, if you have an old computer, that's a great way of giving it uh, maybe not some extra years of life to it. But, you know, just a side computer. If you do not go um, read an article really fast or look for something really fast, maybe you want an old computer that you can just maybe go to be less careful with I don't know you can just format it really fast if it gets a virus you know whatever 
Look at that, 667 megahertz. Oh my god, that's so slow. Now, like, the slowest speed for DDR4 is, like, 2133. So, yeah. You see all the data, all the information's right there, you know. 240 gigs for the storage. 1.5 gigabit. You know, that's a negotiated speed because that's as, high, as fast as the interface can go for the computer. You know, make sure they have the spacer on there because if you have a, a new SSD that's 7 millimeters instead of 9, it won't work properly. You need to have a spacer, which is just a basically a piece of plastic glued on it to make it extra thick so you can just insert the drive in there without a problem. Thanks for watching. Bye.